The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Carrot Oosteros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I am here in a very warm wheat field with Jeremy Boychin, who's Agronomy Research Extension Specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Kara. We're standing out here in the heat, having fun. We're surrounded in wheat. How could you not be smiling? <laughs> Absolutely. So we are here today to talk about planning your winter wheat strategy. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, so, I mean, unfortunately, due to a poor harvest in, in 2019, that brought a lot of challenges for producers. Um, and then an even uh, an extended spring in 2020, we're left with a lot of unseeded acres in Alberta um, and I think there's opportunity there to put a winter cereal in, in into those unseeded acres, um, winter wheat being one of those options. Uh, so I think the first step if you want to take an option, um, take to an option like winter wheat is to make sure that you have your planning in place. That's the biggest thing when it comes to winter wheat um, just because it, it, it doesn't align typically with the normal schedule of seeding and harvest. So making sure you have a good plan in place is going to help make sure that that seed gets in the ground properly. So what are some of the considerations you want to make when it comes to actually making that plan? Yeah, so the first thing you want to make sure you consider is your stubble options. Um, so you want standing stubble and this is going to help make sure that there is uh, something that's going to catch the snow and help insulate that crop when it does, um, when it does grow. The other thing you want to think about is seeding rate. Uh, with a seeding rate, you want to go at a high seeding rate in that 400 seeds per meter squared. Um, and that's helps mitigate any risk of any potential loss due to um, poor winter conditions or, or non-winter survival. Um, and you see greater stand stability in terms of, of yield stability at a higher seeding rate. The other thing you want to think about is a seed treatment, a dual seed treatment with both fungicide and insecticide. Um, that's going to help allow that seed and, and that seedling to get out of the ground a little bit quicker and survive those winter stress conditions a little bit better. Um, you also want to think about seeding date. Uh, so if you are in the southern part of the province, you know, prior to September 20th is, is, is to typically where you want to go. Um, if you're in that Red Deer to Edmonton corridor, um, you're looking at, you know, um, Labor Day to September 15th. If you're north of there, then you really want to go around that August 15th to Labor Day timing. So making sure that you're getting that crop in in ideal timing will help it establish and help it be ready to survive the winter. So of course there's fallbacks if you plant it too late, but is there any fallbacks if you're planting your uh, winter cereals actually too early? Yeah, you can plant it a little bit too early. Um, if it does emerge and you get too much growth you can get increased risk of winter kill um, so making sure that you're you know you're not too eager and getting it in too early um, and kind of fall in between that August 15th to September 15th timing which is coming up soon so it's a good time to start planning and is there any management strategies you recommend going into the springtime when those winter cereals are starting to come back out of dormancy? It really depends on how you manage in the fall. Um, so one of the recommendations is, is to use um, kind of a split nitrogen application technique where you're um, applying some of your nitrogen up front and then the remainder of your nitrogen in the spring, depending on how environmental conditions look, um, whether that stand looks like it's gonna survive. Um, and that's that's really the major thing you wanna think about in terms of, of uh, managing a winter cereal like like winter wheat in Western Canada and using an enhanced efficiency fertilizer can help with that. Um, if you do get into wet conditions in the spring, it'll help mitigate some of that loss. And if you do have to move to a spring seeded cereal because the winter cereal didn't turn out, um, then you still have that, that potential nitrogen there because of it being an enhanced efficiency fertilizer, something that's gonna stop it from being lost to the environment. Okay, is there anything else you want to tell producers, especially if they've never grown a winter cereal before? Yeah, make sure you do your research. There's plenty of information out there. Um, the Alberta Wheat website has a lot of information. The Winter Wheat Initiative has a lot of information. Um, if you're looking at uh, research information, Dr. Brian Barris from AAFC Lethbridge has, a, has a, a lot of research that he's done on winter wheat production in Western Canada. So make sure you do the research and make sure that you plan. Um, planning is going to be the success of winter wheat. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thanks.